DV light. <laughs> of course. What else would it be? Let's see if we can get situated here now that the temperature is no longer 100 degrees. In fact, it's respectable 84. <laughs> You know, the thing I like about Daily Light is that it's just scripture. It was recorded by a family and they gathered together at night to share, or possibly mornings, to share a word from the Lord. And what they would do is they would read from the Bible and they had memorized their own favorite scripture. So they would, each one would contribute by the father would say a scripture and then the mother or the son or the daughter would then add one scripture that fit the same general theme. And the thing I like about that is that it was recorded for us and became one of the earliest devotionals we have. Not the earliest, but one of them. And it's just scripture. You know, it's just as though scripture were speaking to scripture and almost as if it were line upon line, precept upon precept on a topic. And God has always used that for me when there are times where maybe I don't get to my daily reading, <laughs> which is regularly, <laughs> especially recording these, or that I don't get the time to, you know, do a Bible study or catch a Bible study. So I get my, my word in through daily light. And God speaks through that. And maybe today he's speaking to you as you listen and as you set your day in order for what he would have for you to do and to be. When he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these he might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, besides you, what he hath prepared for him that awaiteth for him. Now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Christ shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. <laughs> Boy, ain't that the truth. <laughs> what I wouldn't do to give up this nose. Just kidding. I actually kind of like my nose. It's distinctive. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> that man, the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Let all the angels of God worship him, King of kings and Lord of lords. You know, the first part of Daily Light started off with the amazing statement that we'll be like him and you know, that sounds good, <laughs> looks good, feels good, you know, but sometimes when you look in the mirror, it doesn't look so good. Or when you have been a Christian for a long time and you examine yourself, you realize that the final part of God 
changing us into his image, although he does a little bit each day, will be in the final death of our flesh when suddenly our spirit is set free from the burden that we live in. Because the reality is, is that we all sin and we all fall short of the glory of God, even after salvation. There is none righteous, no, not one, whether it be before they accepted Jesus Christ or after they came to know the Son. So, what we know is that when God sees us, though, he sees the completed work because he recognizes that we will be finished. Because what God has started, he will complete unto the day of salvation. So if you're discouraged at some point in time in your life that you don't measure up to what you thought you might be, or you don't seem to measure up to what you think you should be, in especially looking at others, know this. God is at work both to do and to will of his good pleasure in you. He is going to accomplish through you what he wants done by you, and with your participation, you get to see how he's doing that, and you'll better appreciate what he's done on salvation for you when he died. Because the part of what we do and we don't recognize is that God is working, and we are either vessels of honor or vessels of wrath, but he's still working with us if we know it or not. And so it is our opportunity to give praise and thanksgiving to God each day if we're able to recognize that he is in you as he is in me and he is working through us to accomplish his work. And if we recognize that, then we get to throw up praise, thanksgiving, and enjoy it. <laughs> if not, oh well, then you may have an improper perspective of the role of and the function of Jesus in the atonement for you and what he's done and what he's accomplished and what your salvation really means. So I pray today that, you know, maybe you could take a time to think about it. Think about how much you've changed, how you become the new you, how really you're so much better than what you used to be. Amen? <laughs> God bless.